All live. Good morning. I'm Pastor Drew Ratchet from Riverside Christian Assembly. What a joy, what an honor, what a delight it is to be with you today as we continue winning souls, making disciples, and giving God all the glory for it. What a great day it is. Check out the Riverside Christian Assembly app. We all reloaded. We got a couple of great fundraisers for our youth to get to winter camp. At the end of the month, we're going to have Sandy and Ernestine's delicious enchilada dinner. Come on now. It's only $7 a plate. You'll have a feast. It's a good deal, but there's great fellowship. There's prizes. And then on December 8th, we got the Adams family putting together another amazing pancake breakfast. That was the best pancake I've had in a long time. And I eat a lot of pancakes. So come on out to that. Let's see these youth go to camp. Seek God unfettered with any distractions. It'll be an awesome time. Check out our Christmas extravaganza, candlelight service, all that and more. Riverside Christmas Assembly app. That being said, let's pray and let's get to our lesson this morning. Our Father in heaven, Lord, we delight in you. We thank you that your word is richly in our hearts. Lord, we want to be followers of you. We want to know you better. Lord, we pray that your peace would help us make decisions today. Lord, that your word would guide us today. Lord, that the deeds we do would strengthen us and strengthen our brothers and sisters. Lord, how we love you. We pray for Pastor Jeannie that you would heal her body. Lord, do great and mighty miracles among your people. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen, amen, and amen. Well, let us continue our study on the book of Colossians. Today, I would entitle the message, The Perfect Bond. Not long ago, in 2021, there was a young lady that was all out of hair product. She couldn't find her hairspray. She couldn't find her hair gel. And she had to have her hair in such a perfectly beautiful way. And so she looked around and she found some Gorilla Glue. Now, I kid you not, Tessica Brown was in a tough spot, grabbed the Gorilla Glue, and decided, well, I know it will hold. So she did her hair. She put it on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, and she told her friends that she had put Gorilla Glue in her hair. Some of them said, hey, that's a bad idea. Don't do it. She said, I already did it. And the first week, it was really funny because she had the same exact hairstyle. She could sleep in it, wake up in it. And the second week, it was kind of getting a little old. The third week, it was getting a little bit, uh, is this okay? Is this dangerous? And by the fourth week, she was starting to panic. She didn't know how to get it out. She went to the local ER and they gave her a solution, but uh, the solution ended up burning her scalp and didn't get the glue out. And so now it's gone viral. Her, her hair has been, her head has been burned. She's beginning to panic. She's the gorilla glue girl. There was a local doctor that saw the mess she was in and he did some experiments and he thought he had a solution. So he put some Gorilla Glue in his hair and, and the solution that he had made got it out. And so he delivered it to her. And finally, after more than a month and losing her hair and being burned, she, she was Gorilla Glue free. The bond had eased. Now, there was a man in the same town by the name of Len Martin that didn't believe the story. He thought it was a hoax. He didn't think Gorilla Glue could be that strong. So to prove them wrong, stupid thing to do, he put some Gorilla Glue on his lips. And his lips wouldn't open and he too would end up at the emergency room. And what a mess because of that powerful bond. In Colossians chapter 3, I want you to be thinking of what makes things so strongly bonded. And above all these things, put on love. Because this is the bond of perfection. This is the ultimate bond is when you have love and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called to one body and be thankful. Let the word of God dwell in you richly with all wisdom, teaching, admonishing one another in songs, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing in the grace of God with, with your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word and deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father and always thanking him. Here we see that perfect bond is love. And the peace of God decides things for us. And the word of God guides us. And the good deeds we do for God, they, they strengthen us and they strengthen others. The word there for let the peace of God decide, it's the same word you'd use in a sporting event for an umpire. The umpire has to say, safe, out, that's a foul, technical, you're out of here. He's the one that arbitrates. He's the one that makes the decision. Do you have the peace of God? Is there a check in your gut that you're saying, I know I'm doing the right thing? Do you have that check in your gut that says, you're doing the wrong thing. You need to make some changes. 
Have you ever watched that TV show, Let's Make a Deal? And one of the contestants picks out of a hundred briefcases and one of them has a million dollars and one of them has one dollar and all these increments in between. There's no skill to it. There's no talent to it. There's no tell to it. You simply pick one. You go with your gut instinct. You say, ah, that one, number 22. Should I have gone with 23? Should I have gone with 34? There's no way you could ever know. And then they eliminate different ones, but you go with your gut. What are you singing about? What is your gut rejoicing about? You ever seen that movie Elf? He loves to sing, and everywhere he's going, he's singing because it's Christmas time, and singing's his favorite, or, or on a birthday when everybody's singing happy birthday. I, I wonder if people that don't know Christ, I wonder if they sing very often. I wonder what kind of songs that they sing, what kind of songs bring them joy. A stadium will sing, we are the champions. After they win the title, they're expressing their joy. What helps you sleep? The Apostle Paul, he's making it very clear. Listen, you ought to have the peace of God that brings a song into your heart. You ought to have the peace of God that helps you relax and helps you rest. Think of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 24. The rest of the upright is sweet. That we go to lay down and we have this peace about him. He ends the passage by saying, and whatever you do, do in the name of Jesus. If you go to the casino, you can't say in the name of Jesus, 7-Eleven. You can't say in the name of Jesus and then pull the casino lever and try and get, you know, three cherries in a row. It's, you can't put Jesus' name on things that Jesus doesn't approve of. Lord Jesus, help me get away with this double homicide. Lord Jesus, help me just find this bag of marijuana. Help me find this bag of cocaine. Uh, Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, help me to evade the police. It, it doesn't work like that. You can't put his name on things that he doesn't want his name on. You should be praying for things that you know. There's peace in your heart, peace in your mind. It says, may the peace of God be an umpire. Don't lose the peace of God today. It's not worth it. Secondly, if you're going to have the bond of love, then you're going to have the word of God. And the word of God teaches us how to live right. It shows us the difference between what's right and, and what's wrong. Nowadays, uh, nobody has flashlights like we used to. When, when I was a kid, you'd have to go under the sink and grab the flashlight, get those huge D batteries and plug them in and turn it and hope it wasn't too corroded that you could look around. Now everybody's got Bad, everybody's got a flashlight on their phone. And so they just they flip their phone up. But Psalm chapter 119 says it like this. Your word is a light unto my path. It's, it's a lamp. It's a light. It teaches me where to walk. And he says, may the word of God dwell in you. You see, the word of God, when we hear it, when we read it, it doesn't just stay in our head. It, it comes down to our hearts and, and we feel like we ought to have more compassion. We feel like we need to forgive. We have this feeling of God's presence as we obey his word, as we hear his word. Today, friend, if you have the bond of the love of God, then you ought to have the word of God. And that word of God will be a guide that says teaching and admonishing you all these things. We often go to 24-hour fitness and, and practice basketball. And in that gymnasium, there's kids that are new at basketball. There's kids that are just in there for exercise or having fun. And they'll run up and down. They'll travel. They'll foul each other. They'll, they, they, they don't play right. They don't know the rules. They're, they're having fun. It's a game. It's okay to have fun and make up your own game. But if you go to a college practice, you don't get to make up your own game. You got to wear the practice jersey. You got to coach now. There's rules that will be enforced. And in this life, there are a lot of people playing pick up life. Ah, I'll do what I think. Ah, I'll go by my own rhythm. Ah, this is my opinion. This is, this is what I think about the matter. And there's a rule book that God has given. And he says, you need to teach this word. You need to admonish this word. You need to correct people according to this word. You ever go into a kindergarten class or a preschool class? Pretty awesome, huh? They got finger paints. They got craft time. They got jungle gym. They got cubbies. Remember cubbies? I mean, it's a fun place. There's singing and there's dancing and there's silliness and there's friendship time. And then in the afternoon, they have nap time where everybody's got to, everybody's so exhausted from learning and having fun and making friends that they have to take a 20 minute nap where the lights go dim and everybody lays down on their mat. I mean, what a great time. Contrast that with a higher education, with academia, where everybody's sitting in seats, listening to the lecturer, drone on and on. You're expected to read books uh, thicker than your, your face. I mean, it's, 
It's a massive amount of effort. There's no nap time. There's no, there's no crackers. There's no recess. There's none of that. The Christian life is like that kindergarten class. We're making friends. We're singing songs. We're having fun. And who learns more? The kindergartner learns the whole alphabet. They learn the shapes, the colors. They're learning how to read and write. And, and on the other side, it's, they're not getting that much more from what they were before out of it. They have to go to four years of classes just to learn a, a little bit more. We ought to be lively in our learning. When we obey God and we're making disciples and we're reaching people with the gospel, let me tell you something, it's fun. It's a joy to outreach the other day, we had our Halloween outreach. We were all out there giving out candy, inviting people to church. It was an amazing time of, of fellowship. We had our basketball, tour, basketball tournament where we're sharing Christ and all the teams are huddled up and they're reading Coach Victor's book on daily devotions. I mean, it was fantastic. New people come into Christ. Why? Because we have the joy of the Lord. When they see how much we love each other, they're going to want that. We have this assurance. I know I'm a pastor. I know I, I pastor a church. I not because there's a congregation that I lead, not because I, I show up every week and I preach the gospel. It, it, it's because if you look at my track record, look, look at all, all these years of all these meetings, of, of all these credentials, of a uh, ordination paper, there's another church that agrees. And you, you look at what we do day after day, it assures us of who we are. I know I'm a dad. I'm going to see my kids today. We're going to we're going to practice. We're going to do schoolwork. We're going to take them to the things they have to go to. If you're doing the things you're supposed to do, you'll know who you are. Some people get a little weary. Am I really a Christian? Am I really a child of God? Well, do you do the things that a child of God would do? Do you sing? I mean, sing with your vocal cords. Do you clap your hands? Do you, do you respond to his presence with, with joy and thanksgiving? Do you love his word? Are you disciplined and dedicated to hearing his word, to, to walking out that instruction? This is the bond that we have with each other. I love God. You love God. We're bonded together. We're grafted in. In Romans chapter 11, it says, and now the Gentiles can become part of this tree. It's like there was a branch or two missing. And so they, they took from another tree branch and they put it next to it and eventually it grew together. I heard one of the most amazing stories in 2009. There was a soldier named Brendan Moreno and there was an explosion and he lost both of his arms and he lost both of his legs. He was a, a quad, a quad uh, amputee. And so he couldn't walk. He couldn't reach. I mean, he was at the mercy of everybody else. He survived. Can you imagine how difficult your life just became? And they tried to get him uh, some of those prosthetic arms and they're just so heavy and what he had left, it wasn't working very well. And he was so discouraged. And a doctor came and said, listen, we have an experimental procedure that we think can work. You would be the first if you're willing to do it, but we, we want to try and do a transplant. You know how they do like a a heart transplant or kidney transplant or liver transplant from somebody that's been deceased. They said, hey, look, we think we can do it. Would you be willing to, do you want to be the test subject? And he said, yes, with all my heart, yes. And it took two years until they could find a, somebody's arms that had, had recently perished. And, and so they, they, they kept them and it was a match like it had to be a match. And, and so he went into surgery. It was the first surgery. He said he woke up so excited. He woke up so happy. And he would have to do years of therapy. But even today, he has two arms that he can move and hands that he can grab and he can function now and he can cook and he can clean and he can work a job and he can play hobbies. I mean, he's got a new life now because somebody gave him their arms. The quote I read of him, would, I, I, I wouldn't be able to do all that I am able to do each and every day if it wasn't for that generous donor and her family. God sent his son Jesus to be our donor, to give us a new heart, to give us his peace, to give us his word, that his deeds could be done in us, through us. Let's be so very thankful that we have this bond of love. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we love you because you first loved us. Lord, we have your love in our hearts that we can love others with. Lord, help us to walk this life with lots of love and lots of joy. May your peace guide us, be our umpire today. In Jesus' name we ask, amen, amen, and amen. Well, friends, family, it's always a joy to be with you. Hey, if you haven't gotten a copy of my newest book, I would encourage you to get it on Amazon. It's entitled The Fall of the House of Ahab. 
fantastic book. I'm getting a lot of good uh, feedback. It's blessing people, helping people out. Also, check out the YouTube channel. We're putting all these on YouTube now. Also, and Riverside Christmas Assembly app free at the App Store. That being said, let's give some shout outs. Ashley, good to see you today. Don, good to see you. Oh, Olivia, you got an amazing family and a lot of birthdays this month. Blitz Marketing, Rob Ashley, good to see you guys. Oh, Jermaine Torrey, good to see you guys. What a blessing. You got Isabel Twin Kim, good to see you. Asia, I miss you that day. Good to see you. Natalie Andrea, Rigo, Sophia, oh, the boxer, good to see you. Jerry Walker, Melissa has the glory, good to catch you. Carlos, Candice, man, that was a delicious potluck. Thank you guys for making the main dish. The Riders, Trent Iris, good to see you guys. Jackson in the house. Sailor Felix, good to see you. The Guerreros, good to see you. Kevin Mack, Debbie Mack, thank you guys for getting the prayer cards oh, on task, on point. Man, so many good things happen in these days. Arnold, good to see you today. Well, may the Lord bless you guys, keep you. Like my good friend Greg told me, when you hear the good news of Jesus Christ, you can't unhear it.